Hikers of Reddit, what is weirdest slash creepiest thing you've come across while hiking? When we were exploring the Australian outback as university students, my friend and I found an old, tightly wrapped plastic bag with five or six damaged wallets along shrubbery at the base of a cliff. The only reason we opened it up was because we were so remote, hundreds of kilometers from any town or tourist attraction, that it was strange to see garbage out there. All the cards were in female names and birth dates placed them in their late teens to early 20s. Some lived in the Northern Territory but one was in Sydney and another from Queensland. At the time we figured rock climbers must have stored their valuables in the bag and then lost track of it. I'll never forget the strange look the police officer gave us when we handed them in. I found a note that said something in French. When I got home and translated it, found out it said keep quiet Marcel, or we could all go to jail for 20 years. I was in the woods with three friends at night. A friend's house was nearby and I was getting hungry so I went inside to find some food. Another friend came inside with me. Two friends were still outside. Later on, one of the two who were outside comes in and sees the indoor friend on the couch next to me. They panic and immediately run back outside. I poked my head out the door asking what's going on, only to hear them yell as loudly as they can that's not Kevin. Everyone comes inside and calms down a bit and the story comes out. They thought the friend who was indoors with me, Kevin, had been outside with them this entire time. Why? Because in the darkness of the woods they saw a silhouette about the same height walking alongside them silently, then at some point it ran away and they were chasing it thinking Kevin was running off for some reason. The reason my friend yelled that's not Kevin was to stop the last outdoor friend from chasing whoever was out there deeper into the woods. We still have no idea who that was or why they didn't ever speak. There was one time where my sister and a couple of our friends went camping in a secluded area of the woods. Everyone had gone to sleep and my one friend and I stayed up by the fire just talking. My sister walked out of the woods, assuming she had gone to the bathroom, and stood across from the fire from us for a few minutes then she turned and walked back in the woods. We were so deep in conversation that we barely noticed. When about 10 minutes later, my sister unzipped her tent next to us and came out yawning and scolded us for keeping her awake. That's when it hit us that someone else had been standing across from us that whole time but we don't know who. We checked the other tent and saw that those two were sound asleep. So who was it that came out of woods? Needless to say, we were pretty freaked. My sisters and I were in a tent by ourselves, with my mom and her boyfriend in another tent. All of us were under the age of 10 in the smaller tent. My mom's boyfriend saw a shadow outside our tent, and he came out to check and a man was half naked and was hovering around our tent with a knife if he had cut his way inside. We were all kids. Friends family has a cabin in the PA mountains outside a town called Jim Thorpe. So you have to drive an hour and a half to Thorpe and then 30 to 40 minutes more and then 15 to 20 minutes on a dirt road. They own like 60 acres. You could scream bloody murder and no one would hear you. No one is near you. It's woods and that's it. And it's a cabin. Like a real cabin. There's electricity and running water from tanks you could fill etc if you run the generator. There was a composting toilet of some kind in the tiny bathroom, it had a round shower with a curtain that went in a circle, kid you not, but the rule was you went to the bathroom in the woods. I'm not really sure the toilet worked or was turned on or whatever, the rule always was you took a shovel and toilet paper and walked whatever number of steps I can't remember into the woods. And you pee on a tree if that's what you need to do. The cabin was cool though. It was made of logs, some of the timber on the ceiling still had real unlacquered bark on it still from when they had cut it down right there. Some of it was newer the story was it had been there since the 1800s. It had a little living space where 5 or 6 people could hang out at a time with 2 big fireplaces. One for cooking although it also had the smallest electric stove I ever saw in it, and a microwave. The other fireplace had a cast iron fireplace in it and would get hot as hell and heat the entire cabin bedrooms and all. And it had 4 tiny cells for bedrooms. Each bedroom had a full bed in it and a bunch of shelves on the walls above the bed or on the wall to the one side and that was it. None of it was flimsy mind you. This wasn't a hunting cabin as I understand them. This was an old homestead of some sort. There wasn't a covered porch but there was sort of a platform porch running around the entire cabin. My friend's dad would go up for a few weeks a year in winter and summer to make repairs. But I think he hired professionals to fix it up nice as well each spring. The cabin itself was really solidly made both the older parts and the newer parts. It was actually really nice looking and you felt really secure in it. 
like you could hunker down in it if you had to. But you had to pee outside, middle of winter? Pee outside. Snowing? Pee outside. You're hammered because you're 19 and you and some friends went with your girlfriends to the cabin to drink and fool around? Pee outside, so we get there. We make fires. It's a nice fall night. We cook sausages and boil some whatever food to eat. We start drinking. Playing cards. We were running the generator I think, because I remember using the lights, but you still had to pee outside, long story short. I had to pee. This wasn't the first time I went out to go that night. It was late now though. It was woods dark. It was dark dark. And off I went to pee. This was not a big deal. I walked off a bit. Up the path and I then walk a few strides to the side into the woods. I was in no danger of losing the house. I wasn't that far away at all. I want that to be clear. I am near the house, and I pee. Goodbye natural ice bear. Ah. The seal is broken, again, and standing 20 feet away is a dark shape moving towards me, I immediately stop peeing, what is that? It's slowly coming toward me. The F is that? It's moving slow. And suddenly it lifts the head up. It's a person. I can barely see it but it's a person. Who the F is out here? Who is that? Why are they here? At this point I had been kinda pretty drunk. But now I'm really sober. I get all squinty eyed and I start backing up to the path. Of course I'm not completely silent. I step on a twig, but I'm smart enough to shift my weight for it to not break right? Yes. Except a different twig is under my other foot and that snaps. Just enough that the shape stops dead. My brain immediately thinks that twig means I'm going to die or have to kill and the two of us stand there for what feels like an eternity. I mean, it could have been 2 minutes or 12 I honestly can't tell you. Finally I say in my best Sam Elliott voice what do you want? And I wait, a few heartbeats later the shape responds with, who is that? Almost immediately I ask who are you right back? And we then sort of waited a bit. Both standing still. Finally I hear, my name, the shape says. Is that and he says the names of the other friend and me. I say is that and the name of the friend whose cabin it is. And that is who it is. It's him, it's my friend. We sort it out and walk back to the cabin. We both thought we might have to fight a nutcase in the woods to the death that night. Man this reminds me of the time my grandparents dragged me and my sister on an hours long drive through the woods, we were about 14ish years old. Anyone remember those sunshades they made for car windshields with a decorative design on the front and on the back there was a message saying if you see this call the police? Well there was a car parked in the woods with one of those sunshades sitting in the windshield. I pointed it out to my grandparents as we drove by and they're like oh it's nothing. I'm like you have no idea if it's nothing or not. At least report it to the cops so someone can check it out instead of sticking your head in the sand like an ostrich. In the 80s my parents were backpacking in western Nevada in the middle of nowhere, and came across some guys in an SUV. The guys didn't see them at first and pulled a younger guy late teens slash early 20s, out of the car and started walking down a path into the thick brush. Again, this was strange because this was way out there, they noticed my parents at this point and gave them a look that just screamed get out of here, now. So they did. They were nervous to say anything, but decided it was the right thing to do to report the incident. Nothing really came of it. Fast forward 20 years and in 2015 a detective contacts them both about the incident, and they all meet up. Turns out these guys were part of a big time gang at the time, and they killed the kid and buried his body out there. Somebody had discovered the body or something like that, so they reopened the case. The creepiest part? My dad and I went hiking there in 2014 a year earlier to the exact spot this happened. We very well could have been standing right over the dude's body and didn't even realize it. We called them the tar pits. Deep in the woods here in rural Ohio where I live. There were these extremely deep ruts caused by generations of tractors driving through the same rough spots collecting maple tap buckets, harvesting timber, etc. This one small area had ruts about too deep, and they were filled with this mystery substance. It was like some kind of melted purple taffy with green specks in it. I assume it is something like the leaves falling into it forever and the life getting sucked out of them into this misery pit. The shit was like quicksand. Locals used to drive quads and customized 4x4s around that area all the time. If someone got stuck, it legit took hooking chains to an excavator arm or bulldozer to pull them out, which normally did a lot of damage to their vehicles. One summer, we had an awful drought, 
and the tar pits dried up. At the bottom was basically a giant pile of bones. It was all animals that got into the stuff and couldn't get out. Deer, possums, raccoons, etc. Call us stupid hillbillies, but we loaded up the bones and buried them in a big hole elsewhere. My boyfriend said that he and a friend found a cage in the woods with a mattress inside. They called the police and apparently they were very interested in it. The police officer asked if anybody had heard screaming in the area because other people had reported screams. Terrifying to say the least. Was hiking with my husband. We were in a somewhat popular area, but there was no one out there that day. We had decided to do a 5 mile loop that day in a heavily wooded area. We were more than halfway to a bridge that takes you over the river when we started hearing twigs snapping along the side of us. We were closer to the bridge than to our car so we picked up our pace and started making a bunch of noise to scare whatever it was. I noticed as we got closer to the bridge that I couldn't hear any birds, so whatever it was was still close. We rushed across the bridge before stopping for water. We could hear birds over there, we finished the hike as quickly as we could, but didn't hear anything weird the rest of the way. We know it was an animal following us, but we're not entirely sure what it was. Mountain lions are common in the area so it's possible it was a big cat. Last October, I went on a long weekend kayak camping trip up in the Adirondacks. It's a very calm slow flow river no rapids just smooth water. This is the second year I have gone with my partner's parents it's usually 2 to 3 kids, age 3 to 8, and 5 to 7 adults. We kayak in about 10-ish miles and camp in the middle of nowhere and it's awesome. We go late in the season because it fits everyone's schedule but also because very few people are out that time of year. The overnight temps hover around freezing but the days are fairly warm. There are campsites set up along the way, and there are a couple sections of private land without campsites. There is a section of the river that is really shallow and muddy and usually requires someone to get out and pull the other kayaks through some mud. It's annoying but no big deal. We come to this section and I get out to help guide kayaks through. I was just looking around appreciating the view and I noticed two people in camouflage sitting on hill watching us. A little weird there isn't hunting allowed in this area and there are no, legal, campsites nearby as the 2-3 to three mile section traverses private land. I pointed out the people to some other folks in my group, and they also thought it was weird, and have been up to that area way more than I have. But there's nothing to be done about it so we just move through the section. As we were leaving, I looked back and noticed the people weren't there anymore. We set up camp a few miles down from that section. It's very quiet this time of year no birds are around. Some small animals, squirrels and chipmunks, are around but that's about it. It wasn't quite fully dark, and we're standing around the fire and just doing camp things when we hear what sounds like a human impersonating an owl, hoo hoo down by the water. Everyone who saw the people earlier get dead silent and tell the kids to shut up. We heard some splashing, but it sounded like it was further out in the middle of the river, not too near us. We all grabbed whatever weapon we had, which was minimal a fixed blade knife, a hatchet, stuff like that. Someone headed down to the river bank to investigate. I followed, and we saw nothing, not even ripples in the water. I have no idea what we were hearing but we were all on edge that night for sure. We didn't see anyone else the entire time we were out there and we definitely didn't hear any birds or animals either. Girlfriend and her friends were spending the weekend near a lake in the Uintas, a remote range in Utah. Near to or shortly after dusk, the girls started hearing strange noises and eventually caught a glimpse of what appeared to be a person attempting to duck behind a bush or a tree as if to hide. They quickly got the hell out of Dodge, but left all of their gear and tent in haste. They returned the following morning with one of the girl's fathers and discovered a large shoe print in the tent, too large to be any of the girls. They were noticeably shaken by the encounter. I was backpacking with a few friends. A few days in middle of nowhere a man approached our camp as we were cooking dinner to say hi. We talked about our routes for a few minutes. Out of nowhere he told us that he had had a vasectomy in his 30s after his second child. Then somehow his wife had gotten pregnant with his third child. He didn't believe this was possible, so he demanded a DNA test to see if he was actually the father. He was. Still he explained that he had his doubts and thought that his wife must have fixed the DNA test. My friends and I were in our 20s and had no idea why this guy was telling us this. We all just nodded and smiled. The man stopped talking and then just walked away into the night. Decided to extend a hike I've done many times before to see an old fire watch tower. Misread my map. 
Thought it was 5 miles to the tower and back. Turned out to be 5 miles one way. Was woefully unprepared, ran out of water after reaching the tower, middle of August, not good, heading back from the tower and I started getting dizzy. Lay down on a boulder for a quick rest, ended up falling asleep. Woke up close to dark, started walking back and in my exhausted slash dehydrated state wandered off trail. A few seconds after I realize I'm off the trail a big brown dog comes up to me out of nowhere. No tag or collar. Let's me pet it and then starts walking off. Figure people take their dogs hiking all the time, it's probably headed back to its owner. Follow the dog for what seemed like a very long time. Step back onto the trail at the exact point where I decided to extend my hike, Dogga looks at me, walks around a big tree and either moves into the dark or vanishes. No clue if it was a real dog or I was dehydrated to the point of hallucination but thank you spirit dog for saving me from a really shitty night in the woods. A few miles back in the woods there was an old doll head up on a ridge, I could make out what it was from a ways back, it was dirty and cracked, old as hell at least from the 50s with rolling eyes that close with one permanently closed and the other half open. I didn't know ticks infest trees, let alone one hanging over the side of a cliff. Then one day I used one to hold myself up to get across a dangerous spot, saw it was covered in ticks but couldn't go back without going forward first, and had to use it again going the other way. Real Indiana Jones sticking his hand in snakes moment for me. I found a 1.5 meter deep hole that looked like a grave surrounded by a cage, the hole was full of vines and weeds so you couldn't see the bottom and large knife stabbed into a tree about 10 meters away. We found an abandoned planned housing development. There wasn't much out there except for 600 feet of paved road ending in a cul-de-sac. The back road leading out to this secluded housing development had never been paved and the steep ass hill where they planned to put the houses, was also unpaved, but they'd cleared a dirt road to haul up, the cul-de-sac was bordered by two ponds, which I'm pretty sure were there originally. We do live on a swamp, after all, just stumbling on that was already so weird. The vibe back there was extremely uncomfortable and unsettling. My sister and I both agreed that there was most definitely something watching us from the woods and booked it. Six months later, while out on the town, our father cut through a random neighborhood, entered the dirt road, and before we knew it, we were parking in between the two ponds. We hadn't told our parents about it because we didn't want it to get chewed out. Apparently he was daydreaming about building a house out here, all isolated and shit. While the adults hiked up to the top of Mount Doom, my sister and I got bored and decided to explore a bit. We stumbled on not one skeletal deer carcass but several rotting deer carcasses of varying ages. There was one that couldn't be very old still rotting and covered in bugs. My sister threw up and took off running and sobbing. I started backing away, because my ears were buzzing, and started looking to see whatever had been watching us last time. Because every time I turned around, I could feel eyes boring into the back of my neck. It reminded me of the girl who loves Tom Gordon, which my mom thought was an excellent bedtime read right after it came out. Probably because she's a Stephen King fan and with a small child there's never any time to yourself, Right? I don't actually remember leaving the pile. The thing is, we don't have any kind of big game predators out here like that. We don't have panthers, even though they're native to the state. I mean maybe it was some kind of Shiko's illegal hunting stash? Maybe it was some kind of elephant graveyard? Like maybe this is where the injured deer that get hit on the nearby highway crawl to, to die? I do remember leaning against the collapsing fence, looking out over the other pond. I do remember watching an upturned canoe gently float through the reeds at the far end of the pond, almost lost in the thick marshy forest and the long late afternoon shadows. I remember turning to ask my mom, who had rushed back down the hill to see why my sister was puking and sobbing by the car. She told me to stop being silly and get my sister in the car, while turning to yell up the hill for my dad to get his butt down here. My sister was sick and it was time to leave. A decade later and that plot is still undeveloped. When the county is begging people to sell their land for a public housing project. It's inconvenient and creepy. Every time there's a bad storm, that dirt road is unusable. I shared this story with a coworker a few years ago, and he told me he'd been out there at a bonfire the previous fall, and was pretty sure he'd seen that same canoe burned out on the beach. He never found the deer graveyard, but agreed that the vibe was an instant buzz kill. So an acquaintance of mine just told me this, it happened over the weekend, went kayaking in West Virginia, and at the Putin waiting for the rest of the party to bring the boat back, have an encounter with the local. 
This is undeveloped wilderness, mind. Guy drives up on a motorcycle and addresses them, has two enormous pistols on each hip for no reason other than West Virginia, starts talking to them about his time in Iraq and the shit he's seen, offers them black tar heroin, which they accept out of fear, asks nothing back like it's just a friendly neighborhood gesture on par with borrowing sugar, and rides off. He did all the talking, the WV welcome committee, everybody. Another interesting find on a cute hiking trail in Tennessee there is a dilapidated old-timer gangster car. There is a plaque there saying that this trail used to be used for running moonshine during the Prohibition era. One day the car got stuck and abandoned in the mud. No one ever moved it. Still there to this day. Very nifty thing to find up in the woods. It's at Rock Island State Park. When I was 10 we were hiking on a zigzag road in the mountains. We looked down at a hole in the fence and we saw a car 20 meters slash 65 feet below on its roof. We had to go further down so we were going to pass that car anyway. Although the accident had happened a day earlier and there was no one left in it, it was still an impressive experience that I still think back on regularly. We read in the new paper afterwards that it was a family with four people and nobody survived. Me and a few of my friends like to plan road trips to different states where we do hiking usually involving cool ruins or abandoned places if we can find some worth checking out. Late last December we hit New Jersey to check out the Pine Barrens since there's a lot of cool local urban legends surrounding that area. We figured it would be cool to save one of the ruin hikes for nighttime just to up the spooky factor. So anyways, for the place we went to, you basically have to park on the side of the road and hike maybe a quarter mile into the woods across some train tracks to get to the ruins. We do that and approach the train tracks. The first thing we see when we're beginning to walk up to cross the tracks in the dead of night is a fresh deer carcass that had been deliberately placed there and spray painted with all kinds of symbols. We eventually chalked it up to some local teens playing a prank with roadkill but it was creepy as shit. It definitely didn't help that the Brookspray brick factory already has a dark history surrounding it. That happened a month ago in Panama. I'm a woman and I was traveling with two other girls. If you are not aware. Since 2014 there were two Dutch girls who went missing on a hiking trail and whose remains were later found in one region of Panama and an American girl who was murdered on a hiking trail in a different part of Panama. Both incidents happened in very touristy spots so we were already kinda scared while hiking in Panama. Anyways, back to the story. We were on a hike in Santa Fe, a hike goes through the jungle and the hiking trail is not on the map. The head of the trail started off the road and then you have to go through a tiny village just six to seven houses we asked the people in the village if we were on the right way because in the article about this trail that we found on the internet the description of the trail didn't match the trail we were on at all but the people confirmed it was the right way so we go through the jungle for 40 minutes or an hour finally we reach the waterfall we were looking for we are all standing in front of the waterfall and suddenly a young man appears behind us literally out of nowhere it was one of the men who saw us in the village One of the girls, the one who was always walking the last in line, says, Girls he was following us the whole time, I looked back once and I saw him but he kinda jumped back into the shadow of the trees. The fear I experienced that moment is impossible to describe. We just stand there and look at this man. In front of us is the waterfall. Behind us is the slippery jungle trail that you have to climb up to get back to the road. He silently looks at us and doesn't say anything. It's so creepy and scary I was about to pass out. Then he tried to say something in Spanish but our Spanish is pretty non-existent and so was his English. He asks us in broken English if we are going to swim in the waterfall. At this point we definitely don't want to swim or do anything else at all, we just wanted to get away from him. He went for a quick swim and we started climbing the trail up to the village. He followed us back as we walked but the closer we were getting back to the village, the further was the distance between him and us so by the time we reached the village. We couldn't see him behind us anymore. I still have too many questions. Why did he follow us? Did he hope we will go for a swim and he can watch us? Did he hope he can sneakily steal our phones while we were swimming? Did he want to make sure we didn't get lost or injured? Why did he hide from us and followed us with a distance like that? It was so bizarre, like, if he wanted to be a nice guide to us and make sure we reached the waterfall safely, then why didn't he go from the village to the waterfalls with us? Why did he wait for us to start the trail and followed us behind so that we couldn't see him? In the end no harm was done and I think he didn't have any sinister intentions but my god, after these three women dying on the hiking trails in Panama we were on high alert already and his actions scared the shit out of us. 
came up to a couple of middle-aged guys who were taking a break. I overheard them talking about whether they would be willing to kill liberals in their own family when the time comes. Welcome to Arizona. Not really hiking, just kinda stoned exploring with friends. We saw something colorful in an opening between trees. Upon investigation we found a blanket and six or seven large cardboard boxes. Curious, we opened them and it was all packs of birth control pills. My, male, friends thought they hit the mother load of free drugs. Me, being on the pill, had to break the news. I was hiking with some friends, and I saw a cluster of butterflies on the ground. I thought it was a magical, beautiful moment, until I realized they were congregating on a pool of blood. It turns out that someone had been hiking on the bluffs above earlier that day, and had fallen off and died. Also, I once found manual egg beaters in the crotch of a tree. Two friends and I were hiking a three-day portion of the Ozark Islands Trail in Arkansas. We went in December, so the weather was great, but it was leaf off season, meaning that all the trees had gone dormant for the winter and shed their leaves. The OHT is marked by volunteers with white paint stripes on trees. Unfortunately, what we quickly realized when we started the trail is that in winter in the Ozarks, everything is gray. The trees are gray-brown, and the trail markers are nearly invisible. The trail itself, due to leaf off, is completely covered by a thick layer of dead leaves, making the path totally obscure and difficult to follow. We were amateur hikers hoping to make it 8 miles per day. On the first day, we got lost so many times that we hiked about 15 miles, and never made it to our planned overnight location. Late in the day, as the shadows began to lengthen, we realized that we had deviated from the trail yet again. We had come upon a road of sorts, made of bumpy bricks placed together, with deep gaps between each brick. It must have been an old settler's road from the pioneering days of the Ozarks. After checking our GPS, we saw that the road would eventually come within 100 feet of the trail. We followed the road as long as we could, but it became thick with brambles, and we cut through the woods uphill towards where we thought the OHD would be. As we traveled uphill, we stopped for water and to check the GPS. The sun has dropped below the horizon, and it was about 30 minutes until darkness set in. The trees were gray and thick as mist in this desolate part of the forest. The GPS indicated that the trail was due west of our position, so we picked up our packs and planned to camp as soon as we met the trail. Immediately upon heading west, we came across an ancient-looking handmade rock wall fence. Inside the fence were many protruding rocks, some of them with hand-carved inscriptions set into the stone. They were gravestones, marked with dark gray and worn with age. No path led directly to the graveyard, and there were no signs of people in the graveyard itself. We were exhausted. We had blisters on our feet. We were in extremely low spirits that our adventure had gotten so detailed, and just wanted to rest for the night. But when I say that we got as far away as fast as we could from that abandoned, pioneer cemetery, in the dark of night, I mean it. Later I found out that it was Jones Cemetery, a settler's cemetery just like I though. And it is right next to the Dam Ozark Islands Trail. I was biking along my local river. It was overgrown and few people went there. I stopped for a drink and I see a horse. A dead horse. It is hanging by its neck in the crook of a tree over the river. It was crazy and it really freaked me out, so I goes out of there. Later I realized what happened. The horse died of whatever near the river. Then the river rose and took the body where it got stuck in the tree, then the river lowered, leaving it hanging. Trippy. Was hiking along a stream while exploring out in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly I hear a ear splitting shriek from up ahead. As I round the corner I see a deer lying on the grass opposite bank from where I was and its throat was ripped out. Only thing in the area that could do that was a cougar. Needless to say my exploring was over for the day. I was hiking in Washington sometime in December. I was trying to make my way across a river but the bridge was out. I was walking along the shore looking for a shallow spot but couldn't find one. I saw some footprints leading down the bank, my thought was that someone was trying to do what I was doing and decided to track the prints to see if they crossed. It was not easy but I followed the prints for about a mile. As I approached what looked like a crossing I heard a loud bang like a stick hitting a tree. I froze for a few seconds and heard no other noises. I just slowly back up keeping my eyes on the other side of the river. Could not shake the feeling that I was being watched. Got the hell out of there quick as I could. Went hiking with my dad one day over a ridge. 
a girl from the group in front of us tripped and slid down one side and was just able to hold onto the tiniest branch from the only tree around. Had she slid down all the way she certainly would be dead or massively injured. Two creepy local men who had a young girl, college ecology major, cornered near a stream and not letting her leave. She was in tears and they told me to keep on walking. I got my cell phone out and called 911. They disappeared into the woods and the young girl hiked back to the trailhead with me and my kids. Luckily the inbred idiots didn't realize I had no cell signal. Not hiking but I recently bought an electric mountain bike and on my very first day of riding it I was taking advantage of my new ability to ride up to places I would never normally ride to on a normal bike. I saw an old logging road leading up onto a mountain from the main road and decided to see what was up there and check out the view. I rode way up, further than anyone would go on a normal bike and it wasn't a hiking trail so nobody would walk all the way up there either. When I got up there I started to get a creepy vibe and then came across some kind of camp where someone was clearly living. It was a very creepy looking dilapidated shack and there was so much garbage. It was early spring and obviously someone was living up there all winter and just throwing their trash everywhere. It was disgusting and very creepy. I didn't see or hear anyone at first so I poked around a tiny bit but was so creeped out. Then I heard the voices, you might expect it to be a man's voice, some kind of worker dude or homeless bush man that lived up there in that filthy shack, but it wasn't. It was a woman's voice and a little girl's voice. It sounded like the little girl was playing right around the other side of the shack and the woman was talking to her. I was very creeped out and didn't want them to come around and see my creeping around their disgusting scary shack so I took off back down on my bike, got home and GF said how was your ride? And I said while well, the very first hill I rode up to explore had creepy hill people living up there in a pile of garbage, so it was pretty weird. Not really weird or creepy but the most scared I've ever been, hiking the Grand Canyon with my buddy. We were hiking through a very narrow part of the trail with a big drop off next to us. I was in front and all of a sudden, I hear him scream bloody murder, my first thought was he slipped and fell. I turned around and he's quickly walking backwards. That's when I see the coiled up rattlesnake that I just walked over. He was stretched out on the tail, basking in the sun and coiled up when I stepped over it. I'd if I thought it was a stick or if I straight up didn't see it and got lucky, either way. I consider myself very lucky and I am glad my friend was observant enough to see it before it was too late. I came across quite a lot of weird place, a runaway slave cemetery, a place with a piece of wood carved like a cow skull and a kind of cell made with wood. The one that felt the weirdest was during a solo hiking in the morning, there wasn't anyone on the trail, I listened to some music and then came across a forest that felt quite eerie so I took off my headphones and arrived in a place with human sized cross, I'm like alright. There was a really big fire oven and I'm like you can put some core in here. There were some tombstone and also I rushed a bit and went back to my place. I took a look on the internet and found out that it was a Christian children prison where kids and adolescent were sent to work. I don't think they really used the cross or the oven and it's more that people died because the place was dangerous. In freshman year of high school my friends and I were hanging out smoking and drinking on a riverbank. Pretty secluded spot except for a park across the river that had a small dirt parking lot for hikers. We were just hanging out having a good time stone to hell when we see a hooded man walking along the bank on the other side of the river. It was kinda strange because it was 90 degrees out and who the hell wears a hoodie and jeans in that weather, especially at a river. Also, there was a trail a few feet from where we he was walking going the same direction as him, but he was deliberately not walking on it. He was pretty much almost walking in the water climbing over fallen trees and whatnot, looked like he was trying to stay hidden from the trail for some reason, we all saw him and noted that it was pretty odd, but thought nothing of it. About 15 minutes later it was getting dark so we started packing up to leave. All of a sudden a gunshot rang out. It sounded like it was right across the river, within 2 to 300 yards at most. Immediately after the shot rang out a woman started screaming. When people say blood curdling scream, I never really knew what that meant until I heard that. It sounded like she was screaming for her life. I can still hear those screams in my head when I think back on it, which I try not to do. We all stood completely frozen just staring at each other and in the direction where it was coming from across the river. It felt like it went on for minutes but it was probably only 10 to 15 seconds. Then another shot rang out, and the screaming abruptly stopped. Simultaneously we all grabbed our shit and began running slash climbing up the dirt ledge back up to my buddy's truck. 
At the top I turned around and saw headlights from what looked like an SUV through the trees peel out of the dirt parking lot across the river and speed off. We all jumped in the truck and drove away. I wanted to call the police immediately but my phone was dead so I told my friend to call. They were all freaked out and said no because we were all drunk and stoned and had drugs slash alcohol on us. Since we were all about 14 to 16 and basically retarded, they thought that was most important. I argued but they were all too scared. Eventually we got back to my buddy's house and he ended up calling the police. We told the dispatch and she said they'd look into it. Nothing ever happened after that. We kept checking the news for a while but nothing ever came about. When I was a teenager, I was out hiking with a couple of friends. We were off trail taking an improvised shortcut. We came across a scarecrow of some kind. Just out in the middle of the woods. Had moss and lichen growing all over it. I remember it had a maroon jacket and some kind of shriveled burl for a head. The clothes and size of it looked like it was made as an effigies of some kid, probably late tweens. We don't know how long it had been there but it gave us the creeps. My husband was out hunting on forest land and was approached by a group of Hispanic guys with assault rifles and walkie-talkies asking him what he was doing out there. He tells them he's hunting. He said he could hear a guy over the walkie-talkie say in Spanish that they have eyes on him so he casually glances around and sees someone with a gun pointed at him from further up the hill, he also hears in Spanish get rid of him. At this point the guy he's talking to asks why he's in that particular location so he points to the bear he just killed and explains that his truck is a bit up the hill so this was the fastest route back. The guy tells him to be careful roaming the woods and let him on his way. My husband is Hispanic too but looks white. He thinks they were growing weed out in the woods and he was about to stumble upon their grow site. I don't think they realized he could understand their Spanish conversation. Hiking down Mount Adams at night with some buddies as we stayed up way later than we planned. Came across a strange old woman with longer silver hair climbing with almost no gear, lights, or heavy coats or anything. Told us how it was a wonderful night and then kept going. The moon came up over the horizon as a deep blood red crescent and we started seeing weird rune like markings in the snow. Initially we thought they were pole marks but they were clearly drawn by someone off to the side of the trail. As we came off the mountain into the dead forest we started to get some serious deja vu like we were looping back on ourselves and it felt really weird. I've done a lot of night hiking and it was unusual. By the time we got back to the car we were half convinced the forest was haunted and that the lady was the spirit of Clickitat or something. Not scary haunted, just odd. Camping in an area with sparsely scattered houses and heavy woodlands. A friend and I wandered away for a bit and started following a small creek towards a lake that was surrounded by reeds. As we approached, we began to hear drums and what sounded like Native American chanting or singing. I very distinctly remember that we both stopped and looked at each other in a you hear this shit too? manner and then turned around and went right back the way we came. Giant wolf hybrid dog, alone on a trail. He ran up and stopped 10 feet from me and just stared. It was just the two of us and I legitimately thought he was a wolf. About a minute later this woman comes up the trail and calls to him. He turned and walked away. Scared the crap out of me, lol. Hiking in the Mesquita Range in Colorado I came across an abandoned 90s Toyota Tacoma at around 13,500 elevation. The access road stopped about 2 miles back at the, the mouth of the bowl and the slopes seemed too steep to drive up. I found the non-biological remains slash life contents of a family who crashed an airplane. The wreckage and bodies were airlifted out, but I found all their stuff and parts of the airplane. Bloody dollars, jackets, suitcases. The Rupkind trek in the Indian Himalayas is famously creepy. The highest point of the trek is a small lake at an altitude of 15,000 feet. The lake is surrounded by human skeletons, 100 to 200, which are estimated to be centuries old. No one knows how they got there, however there are many local stories ranging from aliens to some battle fought between kings. Not creepy, but definitely weird, was hiking on a trail with my family, central Ontario. Occasionally passing other people. I stop to admire a rock face and pond when I hear is that a lion cub? Turned around and yep here is a family walking their dogs and lion cub. It walked near to where I was to look at the water and I got permission to pet it, it felt like a woolly softness, rest of hike was beautiful and saw a waterfall. I've come across quite a few things but this past weekend my wife and I went kayaking down a local river. 
We dropped our kayaks off at the launch, which is common, in the morning to a typically busy but now desolate launch spot. It was pretty early as we were doing a 16 miler. This was at about 8 am. Drove one of our vehicles to the pickup spot and drove back to the launch. There was a very decrepit Jeep Cherokee at the launch now. It's about 8.30, I figured he was getting ready to fish. But there's no other boats slash kayaks and no fishing gear. Guy gets out and walks off into the brush, I figured to pee. He comes back and a woman steps out of the jeep. I don't like to be judgmental but these two look strung out, they start to do an impromptu photo shoot with their phones. Odd. Wife and I talk about how odd it is and I half jokingly said they probably were eyeing our kayaks to steal, this launch is literally in the middle of nowhere. As in you either have to be a fisherman or kayaker to know where this is, as there really was no other purpose for them to be there. We load our kayaks and walk them to the water. They follow us down a narrow trail to the water and start asking us about spots to fish from on the banks that's public. I engage in conversation but started to feel uneasy with them as they kept getting closer to us. I unholster my, concealed, firearm to put into my waterproof bag and they back up and just stand there and watch us launch. I have no idea what their intent was. Did they really just want to scout a new fishing spot? Steal our kayaks? Drown us in the water? No idea, I'm a bigger dude so I don't know why they choose us as victims but as I said, they appeared strung out on something and I didn't want a chance it at 8.30 in the morning. I just told my wife at least we left your car at the launch. All they get is a shit car full of dog hair, her car was fine when we got back to it. This was barely a hike. But I used to play in this small forested area behind my would-be high school at the time. One year after a particularly rough winter my brother and I went to go explore in the melting snow back there. Things were always changing back there because it was half a dump site for old benches and tables and wood from the school. Well we were trudging through the mud back there and went to my favorite spot to sit. A corner of the area with a chain link fence running both south and east. In the corner underneath a bunch of brambles I found bones. I was 12 at the time and I guessed that they were animal bones but it was just so weird. They were clean and white and cut super cleanly at different sizes. I showed my brother and he thought they were big enough to be human bones. I wasn't so sure. We left it alone but I made a mental note to check back next time we were out there. I came back the next day and they were gone. Another story I odd from about the same age was in the middle of Nowheresville, Ohio. I was visiting my uncles with my dad and brother and two cousins. The four of us kids decided to go for a hike down a creek that ran nearby. It was an easy hike, the water was shallow and clean. But it was getting dark. It was such an easy hike I decided to carry one of the neighborhood kittens with me as she liked me. Kitty fell asleep in my arms as we walked. My brother and younger cousin fell behind as they were looking at small critters in the water. My older cousin and I kept walking ahead but not far from them. We got to a point where she and I just both stopped inexplicably. I didn't feel anything and neither did she but we both just stopped and looked down ahead in the creek. We could see probably 100 yards ahead of us but again it was getting dark and contrast was hard to determine. It took me a second but eventually I saw something move. I wasn't all that alarmed but it was big I nudged my cousin and quietly asked her if she saw what I could see and she stared off where I was looking. Whatever it was moved again and she nodded. I think it's a dog but I wasn't convinced. It was just too big to be a dog even if it was a Great Dane which I could tell it wasn't. I think that whatever it was noticed us, and when it did the kitten in my arms fluffed up and started hissing. Neither one of us really felt alarmed but we decided to turn around and didn't say anything as we told our younger siblings we were heading back. I looked back a few times and saw it creep in our direction but once we rounded the bend of the creek it vanished and we didn't see it ever again. The kitty didn't calm down though until we were back at the road my uncle lived on. It sounds crazy but I kinda think I might have seen a hellhound if such a thing actually exists. On a scout weekend hike back in, oh, about 1984, we started out Friday night, hiked a couple of kilometers and camped in a nice grove of trees. Illegal camping, admittedly, but we were well trained in no trace camping, so we didn't feel too bad about it. In the middle of the night, we awoke in our tents to the sounds of revving engines, loud music, and gunshots. We were petrified, but just stayed in our tents hoping that no one would see us. They didn't, and the next morning we got up to see, in the meadow next to the grove, three or four burned out, shot up cars. The windshield glass was still soft from the fire, dripping over the steering wheels. Unfortunately, nobody had a camera, 
so we just admired the handiwork for a while, then broke camp and hiked on. Background on me avid hiker and wildlife photographer, very knowledgeable on animals and animal behavior. I was hiking in the Appalachia mountain range on the Appalachia Trail and everything was normal until I was in WV, found the remains of a black bear dead on the trail with its head appeared to be smashed in with a large blunt force object, fairly fresh as it didn't show much signs of decay or even that many flies around, I found it odd and kept hiking. About 4 to 6 miles up the trail I found a perfectly intact ATV slightly off the trail as I went to take a dump the weird thing about it was it had overgrowth growing all over it suggesting it hadn't been touched in months which was odd because it looked like a otherwise nice and expensive ATV besides the fact it had brush growing all over it and flat tires, you would think someone would have come back for it considering the nearest point you could get ATV on the trail was only 5 miles away. I set up camp due to it starting to rain about 10 miles away from the ATV and it was otherwise a normal night except for when it was around 1 am, I started hearing something moving through the brush slowly, thinking it was a bear or a cougar I loaded my pistol and hunkered down in the middle of my tent, the noise went on for about 30 minutes then went dead silent, forgot to mention rain stopped a couple hours beforehand, about I'd say 5 minutes but felt like an eternity passed and I heard what sounded like something on two legs run over the trail in the mud. At this point I freaked out grabbed my pack and ran because whatever it was ran within feet of my tent so if it was a predator it definitely had picked up my scent. I threw a road flare down to hopefully distract whatever it was long enough for me to make some ground and hopefully have the scent of the flare throw whatever it was off my trail. I ran 5 miles back to where the trail to the road was and another 3 to the nearest town. The whole time I felt like whatever it was was following me. Turned out when I informed the authorities of the bear, ATV. And what happened they informed me there had been hikers turn up missing in the area in the past few years, the next day I returned with the police to my camp and showed the location of the bear and ATV. The bear was gone completely except for some small chunks of flesh from what I assume was the head but otherwise no signs of what happened to it, it was on rockier ground, but the ATV was there. The campsite was a different story, it was in shreds, tent torn to pieces along with my gear and everything I left completely destroyed. Most of the gear appeared to be intelligibly smashed, but the tent was slashed with what appeared to either the biggest claws I've ever seen due to distance apart or something made to look like claws, creepiest shit ever. Friend and I were exhausted coming off a mountain. We both saw the parking lot through the trees, it looked maybe 50 feet away. We thought it was odd that there were so many cars in the lot, and we were clearly seeing the exact same ones, my truck, red car next to it, then a black car etc. We kept on the trail and didn't reach the parking lot for another 45 minutes. The parking lot we had seen was a complete hallucination, but we saw the exact same thing at the same time. Here we have this cave in the mountains above the entrance it's spray painted in black welcome home the cave itself doesn't look very big until you realize, that's just the entrance. It has a narrow space no bigger than a two foot opening but if you can squeeze in an army crawl through .it has a huge cave past the small opening you gotta crawl to get in. The first time I went, the movie is above so below came out in theaters and if there are gates to hell the man cave is one the place felt eerie. I went with a group of friends and no one wanted to go past the entrance. I barely fit in the narrow passage and crawled as far as I could. The air got thick and it was the first time in my life I experienced claustrophobia. Normally thing don't scare me not like this. I've been in abandoned insane asylums and supposedly haunted places but none made me feel the way this cave did. There was a trail to the cave with old rusted stairs leading to the entrance. I say was because a few years later the stairs were removed and the entrance is no longer accessible today. Well me and my friend were hiking on a 30 kilometers trail, and were finishing it very late. The sun was coming down. I saw a bear off the trail, far away and I thought I will show it to my friend. I pointed at bear saying did you ever saw a bear? Look. And before I told her that the bear was really far away and it was no harm to us, well she was running down the trail to the village, around 1, 5 hours hike left, scared as hell. I started chasing her as it was dangerous for her to go alone in darkness, the sun was setting down. We were first time on that trail. Well. We ran in some sort of dirt square with very big protestant crosses in darkness. There were three of them and in the dark they seemed way bigger than they really were, they seemed 3 to 4 meters high, when in reality they were 1, 5 meters. As later did I my research this area has some world war 1 fallen soldiers grave spread around. 
But people in the villages in these mountains say that on these trails you can hear sounds of battle and screaming soldiers, it was scary. When I was a kid me and my stepdad were mountain bike riding on a trail that was really close to metro suburbs. We get to the lake and start skipping rocks, next thing we know, we hear a rustling in the bushes of a steep hillside that connects to a main road. Guy walks by and asks where the nearest trail is. So we direct him. He was in a hurry. Rushed. Etc. We get back to the main trail on our bikes and into the roads of the suburbs. Two cop cars pull up with shotguns and rifles asking if we saw a man. A paranormal dude was wanted in six counties, two of which were from another state. Weirdest experience I think of my life. I was 10 or more miles into the wilderness of the Northern Rockies trout fishing with my backpacking companion on a small stream. Hadn't seen another soul all day. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, there's a game warden just a few feet away walking briskly toward me and demanding to inspect my creel. It was unnerving as hell how this man apparently popped into existence from nothingness almost within whispering distance. It was a little creepy. I had newfound respect for those guys' ability to be stealthy. I also had newfound disrespect for my own situational awareness skills. Another kid and I found where the county dumped all of the highway slash railway roadkill. It was this huge pile of rotting corpses and bones of cattle, horses, moose, deer, coyotes, larger birds, eagles, owls, dogs, cats, etc. We weren't even that far down what we thought was an oil and gas site trail in the woods near where we lived. I told my mom and the next time we went back a few weeks later, they had removed almost everything to a muck more hidden location where stupid kids wouldn't find it, but on the walk home, before we found out what it was, we were sure someone was out there committing mass animal murder lol. Not my story but scared the hell out of me hearing about it. My boyfriend and his buddy were scouting out new places to fish. They were hiking down to a spot near the water, and started to get a bad feeling. My BF goes back into the car but his buddy is on the phone because his GF called. A car pulls up behind them, and doesn't slow down. When it starts getting way too close to their bumper, my BF yells at my friend to get in the car and they speed off. The other car starts chasing them. Follows them for about 20 minutes. They pull into a gas station to see if the car will leave. It's a single pump gas station and the other car pulls on the other side and they make eye contact. The guy gives them a scary look and reaches into his glove box. They speed out away again and the guy still follows them. After about 10 to 15 minutes on the interstate, the guy makes pulls off and makes an illegal U-turn. After hearing the story I told him they should have called the police and pulled into the nearest station. They said that was their next move. It's crazy because they think that there was something down by the water slash trail they weren't supposed to find. There's a place that I go backpacking often that is known to have many dead people like boy scouts who got swept away by floods. Sometimes when I go up there, I will find a mysterious bone, probably human, and a worrying number of abandoned tents with all of the belongings still inside. My small group was hiking back to our cars on a very long closed off dirt trail tucked in the Hemas Mountains in New Mexico. Because the dirt road was closed off, we hiked about 4, maybe 5 miles to a hot spring at the very end. It was getting dark as we were on our way back to the road where we parked, maybe halfway through the trail. We passed a young lady walking by herself in the direction we came from, which leads back to the hot springs. She had very long black hair, and wore all black clothes and boots. She seemed to be Native American in ethnicity, but I could be wrong. When we passed her, we said hello, but she did not acknowledge us or even look in our direction. It's like we weren't even there. Keep in mind we were the only ones out there and had not seen any other people on the trail. By the time she would reach the hot springs it would be completely dark, with no cell reception, and she was all alone. We got back to the cars and noticed no other cars parked at the trailhead. Any form of civilization would have been quite a few miles in any direction from there. It creeped us out, but we also felt very worried about her. The fact she seemed to ignore us made us feel like she would not appreciate us following her on a dark trail so we left. I hope she was alright, but also, maybe she was just a badass. When I was hiking in Arizona mountains and my feet were starting to hurt so I sat down on a rock near a bunch of cow turds and took off my boots. I set them aside and started chowing down on some string cheese I brought along with me. I'm sitting there for 15 minutes, enjoying the sun it was a very mild week temperature wise, boots in my field of view, 
and a full-ass baby Arizona bark scorpion comes casually strolling out of my shoe. Quite literally one of the most dangerous scorpions in North America. I was two days worth of hiking away from my car. I flipped, I poked him on the butt with a blade of grass and sat there for an hour procrastinating about putting my shoes on even after checking a dozen times. Fun experiences in Arizona. A friend of mine and I went hiking on a grim, cloudy day. We went to the same place every Saturday but for some reason, we couldn't find the turnoff for our hiking spot. We were getting more and more frustrated and decided to just go hiking somewhere else. We went to another area and everything in my body told me something was very wrong with this place. We start our hike and everything was dead silent. No birds, no wind rustling the branches, nothing. A thick fog was creeping in and it was getting spookier and spookier. We came to a large clearing that evidently must have had a fire at one point. The trees were completely stripped of their bark and the skinny little trunks were black and cinched the whole way up to the tops. They had no branches. It was one of the creepiest settings to look at, these skinny dark trees, growing up from the green grass and everything covered in a thick haze. My friend kept saying he wanted to go back but I wanted to go a little further even though everything in me was telling me to leave. We come to the end of the clearing and that's when we saw it, a partially decomposed human body. The skull still had its hair which was dark brown but something clearly ate its face off. That was it for us. We hightailed it out of there, running as fast as we could go. When we reached the car, it took me a few tries to call 911 because I couldn't immediately get a signal. The dispatcher told us to wait there at our car until the police showed up. That was the longest wait of my life, I thought for sure whoever killed this man was watching us huddled in our car and was going to come out screaming and holding a chainsaw or something. Finally, the cops show up and took our names and we told them the story and yada yada. And then that was it. We never heard from the police about it. Never found out what happened to the dead guy or anything. I've had other creepy hiking slash camping stories but this one was one of the creepiest. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.